Hello viewers, Super GT here, back on the absolute masterpiece of Forza Meme Sport 7. This game does provide so many memes, just so many laughable incidents. And we're going to kick off with one here, as the Porsche rejoins the McLaren Sandwich, or the McLaren Gets Sandwiched, and goes into a roll. First 10 seconds, early doors, and we've got an upside down McLaren. Nice begin, beginning to the, to the proceedings here. I feel safe now though. I'm next to an F1 safety car, you know, the, the absolute bastion of safety in the world of motorsport. Well, come into this corner, what's going to happen, would you think? Yes, that's right, safety car's going to come out of nowhere and just absolutely obliterate that Dodge Viper. Good going, safety car. You are to be trusted, for sure. Down the outside of this Lamborghini, long big braking zone here at Road America. East configuration, or... Or is it west? One of the two. I can't even remember. Big braking zone anyway. Around the outside of that Lamborghini. We're going to try to overhaul this. The other Porsche. So driving, as you might be able to see, the uh, Porsche GT3 RS 2019 version. Added into the game as part of the recent Top Gear update. At the beginning of July. So the car seemed to go very well here at Road America. Um, this configuration definitely suited the top end speed. Uh, not much else happened apart from maybe this Volvo just sitting on the racing line. And well, there we go, finishing third. We turn our attention to uh, Maple Valley. Now, this isn't the uh, full circuit. It's actually going to be a 10 lapper around the very short circuit. So, we're going to go right to the left here rather than up the hill. Now, this circuit is actually technically very difficult it's not an easy sort of circuit to get right you think with these short circuits they're sort of very easy to get right but I think uh, especially that first corner into the hairpin very very technical indeed the way that the sort of the boundaries of the circuit very changes very weirdly and it's very long left-hander to round out the lap which can have many interpretations as to the exact line you take through here sliding our way through following our fellow Porsche once again so it's going to be a fairly short race, this 45 seconds on the clock for the first lap. Just pulling up to the back of the, the German in first place, getting very close. Couldn't quite control the car through that corner once again. So again, they've got this very long hairpin uh, with many possible interpretations of how to get through it. As we swing right for this double right-hander, which opens out very nicely. So the car, sorry, the track is a lot wider now. Uh, than it was in previous iterations of Forza Motorsport. I th I, I'm not a fan of the wider circuit. I think it's actually too wide now. It, I, I don't really, uh, I don't really know for sure if it is definitely wider. It just feels a lot wider. Maybe the cars are bigger as well to compensate. I don't know. It just feels a lot wider than than before that it did on Forza 4 and the earlier games. But anyway, here we are in lap three. Up into first, but we we do have the attention still of the Porsche behind and the growing attention of the guy in third place driving a Ford GT, uh, the 2005 car, very good in S class. S class is typically one of the fa my favourite classes. It has been for the far past couple of games. Um, it has de it was definitely Forza Six, uh, Forza Five. I mean that horror show. I've basically forgotten that it exists. Anyway, but in, in uh, Forza 4 at least, it, it was A-class for me. So it's going quite a long way back now, before S-class wasn't my favourite. But we st we're still still in uh, still in first place. But uh, the guy behind is beginning to threaten. I'm just about to avoid the sign. These signs uh, can litter the circuit. It can really put you off your line if you hit them. Just looking behind there, you see the 4 GT, the red car. Get very close now. It wouldn't be a Forza Motorsport hopper if you didn't have a back marker just drifting all over the bloody show. And here we go, he's going to swing over to the right. Okay, we'll take the inside line. Never quite sure what these guys are thinking or if they are actually thinking. You know, he might not actually have a brain because some of the people, some of the things that people do, I think you mustn't actually have a brain to, to, to do those things. So then, uh, lapping a Lotus Elise GT1 in S-Class, which should basically be impossible, but it is happening. Forza, the place where the impossible is possible, 
because rammers and back markers make it possible. Uh, rounding out lap 5, the end of lap 5 then is halfway, the uh, 4 GT very close behind. Thinking about the move into this first corner can be an awkward place to go for a move because it isn't really one, uh, it's not really a corner with a long braking zone so you can't really outbreak anyone into that. Acura going very wide on the exit so we get past, uh, past him quite convincingly. 4 GT just slots up the inside very nicely. It's a good move, up into the lead, I'm down to second now. So I'm going to just nip up the inside, he leaves the space open. I'm going to take that invite and welcome myself to the party of first place. I'm back in, just taking the sort of a meet. I, I did move across there, I'll admit that. Just slightly moved across and the Mercedes safety car just bounces off the wall, comes back across the circuit, I've never seen that what happened before and I get sort of lifted up by the 4 GT oh my god what is going on in this lobby the things we are seeing it was the safety car from cars as well bouncing off the wall back into the path of the leaders causing all sorts of chaos what is going on I don't know anymore the, the, the scenes you see here in Forza Motorsport I mean I don't even have to record many races anymore and you know things just happen it's, it's just so easy to record some interesting goings on in the world of Forza. It just, it just happens so freely and abundantly. And I don't really have to put any effort in to make it happen. So the, the 4 GT, look up the inside, he, he sort of just backs off and make it really, really easy for me to just sweep around the outside. So keeping second, now the Porsche ahead, keeping first. This is a really good race, this, even though it's pretty chaotic and mental. It's actually uh, decent racing. Lotus spinning wide. McLaren in the middle of the track. I'm going to try to go around. He's outside. He gets punted. I think the Ford just tapped him on. And he's been sent spinning into me. And I'm going to go well wide. The Ford there slowing down, in fact, to let me go back past. This is the end of lap 10. In third place, we round out the race. So it's a bit disappointing in the end. It was a good race, though on the whole. So we've come to Sonoma in the Pink Pig. Can we go about getting well inside the top 10 here? Back into the back of the Centenario. Uh, this Camaro not giving me too much space to kind of stay on the circuit, but we'll just about get through. In 7th, Lotus GT1 very slow, and he's just, just not going to bother turning. I mean, there's a corner there, mate. You need to turn right. Didn't really bother. That was a very lucky rejoin. As I just come back onto the racing line and look at this through the middle, parting the seas. Moses makes an appearance. Oh, it's absolutely godly. Absolutely godly through the center. The rest of the race was shit though, so I'm going to forget about that. Here we go though, Mugello. I love the circuit. Can we have a good race around here? Let's see. 11th pos uh, position off the line. Couple of cars spinning already. I mean, come on, guys. This is something. I don't know, I, I think I need to make a guide, you know, just how to start, how to get to turn one without crashing. It's, it's, that should be the easiest bit, but people seem to get that wrong. I think the main thing, people just, uh, they, they don't judge the speed of the car ahead and just sort of go into the back of them. Just always be ready for that car ahead to be slow off the line or to just not move at all. Always get ready for that. Uh, in, uh, integrally onto the, onto the gravel, the size of that thing is absolute beast. We're through past him. Sitting in fourth, gone from 11th to fourth. That is a good start. We try to follow with the 4 GC here. So there's actually a different person driving here this time around, even though it's the same colour, same car. BMW, sorry, it's not BMW. That is a Bentley going very wide on the second to last corner. Just put a nose alongside the 4 GT there onto the back straight. And he's going to push this Porsche into my path. What a scintillating defensive method there. And the Porsche is just getting brutally pushed down the straight. The Bentley taking no prisoners. Just ruthlessly pushing the Porsche down the straight. And uh, I've lost a couple of positions as a result of all, all of that. Bentley way too deep into turn one. Bit of contact. I didn't really mean to sort of come across that aggressively as I just came off the brakes there. Into the first corner. Wow, it's all kicking off at Mugello. Mental Mugello, as we shall call this race. Look at that group behind. I am so thankful I'm not part of that. We can hopefully 
build a bit of a gap and get away from that massive group from the horde. That was an amazing method by the full GT, just to push that Porsche into my path. Ford wasn't affected in the slightest. Quite how he did that, I don't know. Well, I do know it's just because of the connection issue. I don't think the Porsche actually was there on his screen. But we're just going to go onto the back of the BMW head. Onto lap number three now, of seven in total. Uh, the leader is uh, he's long gone, he's bolted, he's gone. Uh, I don't think there's much chance of that, but we can definitely rescue a third, possibly a second at best, if things really go to plan, or don't go to plan for the guy in second. Uh, so coming through the chicanes, driving the car a little bit differently now. Uh, the car does feel stiff, we do love a stiffy. I love a stiffy, but you do have to drive them in a different way. And just really patient mid-corner, and uh, let the car really rotate. Getting the undercut on this guy, the BMW, going to give him space on the outside. We do get the job done into the final turn. So there is this weird sort of handling mechanism in Forza Motorsport, whereby if you let go of the throttle and the brake halfway through a corner or during a corner, the car kind of just pivots. It turns a lot quicker after about a second of doing that. So it might, it, it does feel weird as I go defensive into turn one against the Porsche. It does feel weird to do it. So, sort of to let go of everything. It feels counterproductive, but it does give you extra rotation. It does turn the car better. So there is a bonus to it. So being patient mid-turn, especially in a car that's stiff, it can pay dividends. And it can be crucial on this kind of circuit because you've got a lot of direction changes. And a little bit deep, sort of pressured into that. Quite stupid uh, defensive, not, well, semi-defensive brake. It's just went way too deep. Porsche getting the, the undercut, so the big brother, gives me way too much respect, I think, and it makes it really easy for me to go around the outside, sweep around the outside, going a little bit deep, uh, deep into the final turn, as we now get back onto the main straight. I think that Porsche, though, is absolutely flying the Carrera GT. He definitely got way too much straight line speed for me. I can't handle that. I can't cope and uh, beat that for speed. All I can do is really just hope to keep with him through the corners and capitalise on a mistake. So the BMW just behind, sitting in fourth, not too bad at the moment. It's actually been a good race. I mean, there's some pretty crazy goings on on that one and two. But it's, it's settled down now nicely. I think once these races do settle down, they're actually quite good. Um, the thing about Forza, it, it gets a very negative sort of press early on because there are so many moves smashing the hell out of everyone. It still happens, of course. But I think it is a lot better now than it used to be. I mean, it has been a year since the game's been released, nearly. So, you know, your casual noobs are going to have moved on now to play Fortnite. So then they're, they're no longer here. So we've got the attentions now of the SRT Viper. And we've got two laps remaining to try to hold him off. And I think fourth might be the best we can hope for here. GT3 RS not quite able to match the Carrera down the straight at least in terms of the tune that we have on our respective motors. So second place has done well here uh, to keep it nice and steady in the 4 GT just up ahead. He hasn't really made too many mistakes. First place has obviously driven very well, he's, he's way ahead. And I'm sitting here in fourth, just doing my best to keep the position. I need to have a good run and I really have not had a good run through the middle of that chicane. The car just didn't quite want to change direction as I would have liked. So it's going to put us on the back foot, coming down the hill into the final turn. And a bit on, uh, on the brakes a little bit, a bit, uh, bit, a bit better that time, trying, uh, trying to get my words out. So here we go, one lap remaining, still got the attention of the SRT Viper. Is he going to be able to get close enough? I can't quite determine the strength of that car. It does seem not too great on the straight, so I'm guessing it's going to be good around the corners. Normally the Vipers are um, very good cornering cars. I mean, historically have been in S-Class. Uh, most notably, of course, the 08 Viper. So then, through turn two, through turn three, um, the Porsche ahead hasn't really pulled away too much as a result of, I think, a couple of mistakes, but he has gained onto the back of second. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. We're basically going to run out of laps. And I think possibly the guy behind us is almost going to run out of laps. He's very close, about as close as he has ever been. He was right behind me on lap one, and he has finally recovered to get back, uh, back 
uh, right behind me. Coming through the final corner, going to run slightly wide onto the grass, going to give me poor momentum. Is he going to be able to do enough to get past on the line? Not quite. It was very close. Well within a tenth as we crossed the finish line. Uh, very close indeed, 16 hundredths or 16 thousandths, very, very close. And it was a good race in the end, so, you know, good racing, it can happen. But there we go. I do hope you enjoyed it as always, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Subscribe for more. I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.